Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Psalm 22 begins with one of the most startling questions of Scripture. It is the one that most of us, out of our feebleness of faith, are too timid to ask. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is a question asked by one who feels utterly abandoned, alone. As the psalm continues, we discover that the world has piled up on our ancient companion. Not only does he suffer maybe illness or grief or loss of a job, we don't know, but what we see is that in the midst of this suffering, others ridicule him. They mock him because despite his pain, he still trusts in God. It's too much. Unraveling relationships, public shame, suffering and death. Out of his deep pain, he cries out for help. Psalm 22 is one of the more than 50 psalms of lament in the Hebrew scriptures. The cry for help that has deep roots in our tradition is a form of prayer that has largely been lost in our contemporary culture. So what we may not recognize when we hear this painful cry is that lament is another form of love song. What wondrous love is this? That even in the midst of pain and suffering calls out to God? That even when others ridicule him for his hope, refuses to let go his trust in God? That even for the sake of all those who mock him, will not turn away from the God who has abided with him from the day he was born? It is a wondrous love that even when asking that question, why have you forsaken me, it is still addressed to my God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? According to the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, Psalm 22 was Jesus' cry from the cross. I suspect that for the author of the Gospel of John, it was simply too scandalous to even suggest that Jesus would feel, feel this all-too-human despair. Given that it's impossible to deny how Jesus was suffering physically and mentally in his crucifixion, I can't blame John for not wishing this additional spiritual pain as well. Yet all of our witnesses concur on this point, that Jesus' suffering is expressed remarkably well by that ancient psalm of lament. Psalm 22, verse 7. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Verse 16. They pierce my hands and my feet. Verse 17. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. As those first witnesses made their accounts of the passion of Christ, they made note of all these ways that Jesus' suffering aligned with that of the ancient psalmist. Jesus is an innocent man, crucified for his fidelity to God. Is it any wonder, then, that Jesus would also cry out from the cross, My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? It is a wondrous love. For what Jesus knew 
what the witnesses knew is that while Psalm 22 is a psalm of lament, lament is only the beginning. Pain and fear are only the first part of the story. Before it is over, lament is transformed to praise, despair, and to thanksgiving. God has heard the cry of this faithful servant, and so the psalmist sings, He does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them, but when they cry to him, he hears them. So the answer to the question, why have you forsaken me, is simply, I haven't. Even while that cross is yours to bear, the truth is, I am with you. You are not alone. You are loved. There is hope. This is why, of all the names they could have chosen for this day, they chose Good Friday. My God.